Every so often, it feels like Apple stops everything to release a new version of a product that genuinely feels special. And this year, 2024 for the Apple Watch, that is one of those years. Because somehow, the Apple Watch has already been out for 10 years. It has been a decade since Apple announced this product. And I remember so clearly watching Tim Cook walk on stage with his arm raised for the first time, showing everybody what they'd been up to. Because I'm not sure if people remember the context around the time of the Apple Watch launch. It was not just Apple's gonna make a smartwatch, it was Steve Jobs is dead, you haven't had a true hit since the iPhone, and Apple doesn't really seem like they can innovate anymore. What are they actually doing that is different? And well, the Apple Watch was their answer. A small wearable in two different sizes that was a rounded rectangle shape that nobody had really done before because up until the Apple Watch, all watches were circle. Why would you release a rounded rectangle? Apple believed that this gave you more screen real estate, that it made sense for a piece of technology on your wrist to utilize a form of factor that made more sense for the tech, and something that could also track your fitness and measure your health in new ways, giving you notifications notifications along the way when people text you. I just, I feel like people look at the Apple Watch and it's like, oh, of course it was a success. But at the time, people did not think this was it. People were like, Apple can't do this. They're done. There's nothing else happening from them. And Tim Cook had a different vision. And now it's been a decade of that vision. It's been a decade of this rounded rectangle that's basically looked the same since 2014. So what's coming next? Based off the latest leaks and rumors, I'm very excited to show you what I believe is the best look yet at the Apple Watch 10, and here it is. While fundamentally it's keeping the DNA of what the Apple Watch has been and will continue to be. It reinvents the form factor, gives you a crazy good looking display, and completely changes the band system while also introducing some breakthrough health features. And I could not be more excited for this product because I just feel like the Apple Watch has been due for an upgrade. This is that upgrade. Starting off with the new form factor design and updated chassis that I think looks so good. Apple is modernizing the Apple Watch in a moment that feels exactly like what they did with the iPhone 10 back in 2017. Apple's finally gonna be giving us the watch that they've always wanted to make now that the tech is finally ready and available to mass produce on a scale where they can sell millions of these in a year. And this reduction in thickness is just about 10 to 15% as we're guessing in our renders, which by the way, go subscribe to Shea over at Concept Central, he did an incredible job and made these renders look absolutely unreal. But as you can see, even a slight reduction in thickness makes the Apple Watch look a ton sleeker than it does currently. Now around the rest of the Apple Watch X, Apple will be keeping the other fundamentals like the digital crown and the side button. But I also think it's possible, although it hasn't been rumored that Apple could add the action button on the other side of the watch as well. Just because this has been such a hit on the Apple Watch Ultra and now that the Ultra has been out for a couple years exclusively with the action button, it would make sense for Apple to trickle that down to the regular watch. And this new Apple Watch design looks almost as good as you will after using the new Shave and Suds bundle from Harry's who actually sponsored today's video. The shave part is Harry's classic bread and butter here. You're getting the iconic orange trim and handle with an ergonomic no slip grip, a textured surface, as well as a weighted core that gives you the best shave of your life when you combine it with Harry's shaving cream that I just absolutely love. And then the Suds part is a travel size body wash with a rich lather that just smells amazing amazing. And for your face, an exfoliating face wash made with peppermint and eucalyptus. It'll leave you feeling cool, recharged, and refreshed. Smoother than a stainless steel Apple Watch thanks to the natural exfoliants that are in this stuff. Plus, if you're tired of subscriptions, I think you're going to love this one because Harry's is available at your favorite retailers like Walmart or Target. It's super convenient for me to pick this stuff up while I'm already on my weekly gross run. Listen, Harry's is my pick to look my best. And right now, you can try out the Shave and Suds kit by using my link down below in the description in Oregon by picking this stuff up at your favorite retailer. A huge thank you again to Harry's for sponsoring this one. Now let's get back to the Apple Watch. Here's the thing though, along with all these visual changes for the Apple Watch 10, there's also going to be a pretty functional hardware change when it comes to the band system for connecting your straps to your watch. Because for the first time in the Apple Watch's history, Apple is said to be ditching the prior band system and switching to something that is magnetic and completely different from what we know currently. And while on the surface it might sound like Apple is just changing the band system to force everyone to buy new bands, there's actually a pretty good reason for the change. See, if you look close at the band system on a current Apple Watch, it sort of eats into the frame of the watch, and you're actually losing a decent amount of dead space there where you just slide in the band connector. Space on a product that is already so tiny that could be used for more battery or new components or breakthrough health features. 
We'll get to the health features later. This space, if Apple switched to a new magnetic system, would be freed up for that stuff. So this new idea is that Apple is gonna allow you to attach these bands using magnets, and you can get a really good band experience that is stable and secure while also being able to do more with your watch than before. And as of right now, we haven't heard concrete rumors that Apple is gonna release an adapter for old bands. It's very feasible that this moment for the Apple Watch X could be a headphone jack step change like they did for the, the iPhone, where it's here today, gone tomorrow, and ultimately I think down the road, which was the right choice, although it will be a bit painful when it happens. Now looking around the rest of the Apple Watch 10, the other big thing here is the screen, which I believe is going to get thinner bezels and a bit larger than the current version because the bezels on the current Apple Watch, even the latest Series 9, just are pretty thick overall. And it definitely feels like something like with the rest of the design that Apple would slim down a bit and maybe even use some entirely new screen tech to make it happen. See, for years we were hearing about Apple's work on this new micro LED display tech, which was brighter, more efficient, it looked better than OLED, and Apple was gonna trial it first on the Apple Watch before any other product, and then gradually roll it out. But out of nowhere this year, Apple canceled the project. It's not happening, it's not coming to the watch, and it was supposed to ship on the 10 later this year. So how is Apple gonna fit a display in here that still looks good? Well, we've heard from a recent report that Apple's just planning to use the same OLED technology, but albeit it's more efficient, which sounds like a pretty good compromise. Well, I was definitely excited to see what micro LED tech would look like on the Apple Watch. At the same time, it's a screen that's not that big, and I feel like OLED is still basically the best you can get. To me, the most important note for the screen here is that it is remaining the rounded rectangle. There have been zero rumors, zero credible sources whatsoever saying that the Apple Watch is going to go circle or that Apple is changing the general form factor of the screen. It is a rounded rectangle. It's been like that a decade ago, and I very very much believe it will remain a rounded rectangle for the next decade moving forward. The thing about the Apple Watch though, is that it's never really been about the screen or how it looks. It's always been about the health and the fitness features. And this year, we are finally getting one of those health features that just feels like we've we've made it pretty much. Because 2024 will mark the beginning of blood pressure monitoring on the Apple Watch. Apple has been working on this for a super long time, probably since the start of the Apple Watch a decade ago. And if you're wondering why blood pressure monitoring is such a big deal, why I'm this convicted that it's a step change for the watch, it's because about half the people where I live in America have high blood pressure and they don't even know it. And about 1.3 billion people around the world have high blood pressure. And I think it's also about half of those folks don't know that they have this condition either. And high blood pressure specifically, also called hypertension, can put extra strain on things like your eyes, your blood vessels, your heart, your brain, your kidneys. And over time, prolonged exposure can make you at higher risk for things like heart disease and other potentially life-threatening conditions. Something, again, that like half the people that have it don't actually know they have it. This is not a feature like blood oxygen where it's kind of niche or ECG where again, it's kind of niche. This is something that could quite literally make an impact on hundreds of millions of people overnight by putting one of these on your wrist. Now, to be clear, this is not going to allow you to take a blood pressure reading. Unfortunately, the first iteration of blood pressure monitoring will not be on demand. So it doesn't sound like you'll be able to go on your watch and get your specific systolic or diastolic readout. It'll just, again, let you know, hey, we've noticed a pattern, go talk to somebody. Which arguably, if you can only do on demand or always running in the background noticing things, I feel like that's the one to go with just because it'll have a greater effect on a greater number of people. And that's just the first new health feature on the Apple Watch X because Apple Apple's also said to be adding sleep apnea monitoring as well. Now, sleep apnea is a sleeping disorder where your breathing essentially starts and stops multiple times throughout the night. It can cause you to snore really loudly and it can cause you to not get a restful night's sleep. So you'll wake up even if you slept eight hours feeling super tired and exhausted and not really knowing why. Because all of this is happening when you're sleeping, you might not even know you're doing it. It can be really hard to diagnose. So Apple's gonna build a feature into the Apple Watch, potentially even through software that they could port back to older Apple Watches, where while you wear your Apple Watch at night, it can hear your breathing patterns, look at your pulse rate, and also listen to see if you are getting the characteristic very loud snoring or some of the other symptoms of sleep apnea. Another thing that people might not even know they have, that your Apple Watch could genuinely impact your quality of life, which is those human touches that I think are going to make the Apple Watch X 
more than just a cool looking new redesign. Now, finally, there's also a third health feature that Apple's been working on, but unfortunately it's not ready just yet for this year. And that feature is non-invasive blood glucose monitoring, which was actually, according to some reports, the last thing that Steve Jobs commissioned before he passed away. This feature would be a genuine breakthrough for people with diabetes because it would allow you to get your blood glucose reading without pricking the skin. Generally, you have to have either something like in your body or pricking your skin, drawing blood, and getting a reading of your blood sugar levels. It is invasive. It's something annoying that you have to do all the time that people just kind of get used to, but it seems like something that someone could solve. And Apple has been working on this and we're hearing that they've actually cracked the code. Apple has this working. They just need to miniature it now, but they figured out the tech. There's somebody at Apple that has cracked the code. And when this drops on the watch, that is just going to be another thing groundbreaking. Yeah, I don't want to go too in depth on this just yet because it is at least a couple of years away still, but I just wanted to preview that. There's also some other major health stuff that Apple is still working on even after we get these big health features coming this year. Taking a step back and knowing everything we know now about the Apple Watch 10 and our vision for what this device is going to look like, it sounds like it is going to need a larger battery. Something, by the way, that has not changed whatsoever on the standard Apple watch line since it was released 10 years ago. Yeah, Apple's promised 18 hours for a decade, and I don't know how they got away with this. I get it lasts through most of the entire day for most people, and you charge it every night, but I did think a decade into the watch, and I remember everybody said this in their reviews back in 2015, the, the battery life's gonna get better. It, I mean, kind of has it. The only specific rumor we have for the battery life so far is that Apple is putting a more efficient OLED display on the Apple Watch X. More efficient means less battery draw, but then other features like blood pressure monitoring could potentially take more battery. So I really wouldn't be shocked if Apple said it was the same 18 hours, especially with the device getting thinner. But considering that Apple has packed double the battery life at 36 hours into the Apple Watch Ultra, I just feel like there is a way 10 years into this product to make it at least a few hours better. In short, it is a big year for the Apple Watch, a big year following a succession of really small updates for the product and never a truly major crazy overall. This is the 10th generation version of the Apple Watch. And I really do think it is going to redefine what a wearable can be once again, just like it did back in 2014. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I appreciate you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.